Good morning. Welcome to St. David's Episcopal Church on this second Sunday of Easter. Uh, will you join, stand and join us in our opening hymn, number 212, in the blue hymnal. Number 212 in the blue hymnal. Our service of Holy Eucharist continues in your worship booklet on page one. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Let us pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, 
who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation. Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Join me in saying this psalm responsibly by full verse. Hallelujah, praise God in his holy temple. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with lyre and harp. Praise him with the temple of the dance. Praise him with strings and harp. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A reading from the Revelation to John. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from whom, from him who is, who was, and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look. He is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come the Almighty. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. <coughs> then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Will you pray with me? Through my words, O God, and in our hearts, may we see and believe. Amen. Please be seated. I think some of you know that the year before Sarah and I were married, we lived in Arizona and uh, for about a year. And one of the things we did while we were there was to run a youth group. And our kind of um, crowning moment for that group was a, a trip to the Grand Canyon. And many of these kids, or all of these kids, uh, despite living in Arizona, had never been to the Grand Canyon. And I'll always remember, as we were pulling up in this massive church van, um, up to where the uh, not even the entrance to the park of the Grand Canyon, but just the first sort of pull-off where you would stop and actually see the thing, we stepped out just to stretch our legs a little bit and also to, to take a look at this beautiful sight. And one of the first words out of uh, one of their mouths was, it looks fake. <laughs> because it does. There's something about something so big and so beautiful and breathtaking that you've only seen in, uh, in, in postcards and pictures and, and movies and things like that, that our brains just can't quite handle it. We can't quite take it in, and so we kind of put this distance between it and us. But, and yet the Grand Canyon is one of those places, if you've ever been, where it actually lives up to the hype. You know, people talk about things all the time. They say, oh my goodness, words can't describe how beautiful it is. And, and I think sometimes that's true, but sometimes it's, no, nah, it's just a big mountain, or, you know, it's a big hole in the ground. Like, I, I get it. But the Grand Canyon, it, it's a really big hole in the ground. 
And it's really far across. And you can tell by seeing it just how many millions of years it took to form. It's this incredibly beautiful thing. And it, so it actually truly lives up to that hype of something you can't describe. You have to experience. The only other thing that, that's, that's lived up to its hype in that same way that I've ever experienced has been seeing the Mona Lisa in person. Um, that was another moment where I just thought, wow, I see why this has been such an iconic piece of art. And I learned later that, you know, when you go to the Louvre, as, as one does, um, uh, you might not actually be seeing the Mona Lisa because they swap it out for, uh, you know, that they have the original and they have some copies that they do just, you know, keep the original safe. So one of the copies of the Mona Lisa is superb. <laughs> I can tell you that much. But... There are, there are these experiences in our life that words simply can't capture. But we try to anyway. We try to take these experiences and, and surround them with words, with descriptions, with photographs, because something in us just has to tell this story. Something in us can't see something like the Grand Canyon and just walk away and keep it to ourselves. We have to share it. We have to tell someone else, I went to this place, and, and it was amazing, and it was so big and just breathtaking, and you have this sense of yourself as so small, and yet witnessing something so enormous. Easter is like that. Easter is like the Grand Canyon, the Mona Lisa, pick whatever. It is this story this moment in time that is, looms so large in our spiritual lives, and our emotional lives, that we cannot possibly put words around it. We cannot possibly tell the entirety of what this story, of what it means for Jesus to be raised from the dead. We can't put words to it, but we try anyway. We try anyway in part because that's the story we have to tell. Not only is the story of Jesus' resurrection the central one for us as Christians, but even when, when you read the stories, the accounts of the resurrection in Scripture, none of them are, and then the, to, the, the stone rolled back from the tomb and Jesus came out, or, or, or none of them are, are Jesus in Jesus' body suddenly being, being enlivened again and Him standing up. It's the only story that we have is the story of an empty tomb. And in fact, the only story that we really have is the story of these women, Mary Magdalene and the others, who went to the tomb at early dawn on the first day of the week. They went and they found the tomb empty. And so they had to go and they had to tell that story to the other apostles, the other disciples, and, and tell them about this incredible good news. Tell them about the resurrection. So telling the story, sharing the story, is in, inextricably part of the story. Because that's what the resurrection is. That's what it does to us. It, it transforms us and forces us to go out and to tell this story, the fact that, that this Jesus who, who came and taught and loved and healed and eventually was killed because we weren't ready for the message he was here to bring. We weren't ready for the kingdom that he was here to enact. And so human authority, religious and political alike, did what it always does with threats to its legitimacy, and we tried to silence it in the grave. But, but even that, even that most awful evil was not enough to, to silence the Lord of life, and so he had to be raised again. That, that story is something we just have to keep on telling and keep on telling, and, and the telling becomes a part of the story itself. And the apostles knew that once they got it through their heads that these women were telling the truth. These first apostles, I should call them. And so they knew that they were going to have to tell the story. And wouldn't you know it, they had a golden opportunity to share the good news. Because Thomas wasn't there that first night. He missed it. And so they had the opportunity. They had it lined up for them like a, like a perfect pitch coming right in the middle of the strike zone. 
You know, it was all teed up for them. He was one of the apostles. He'd known Jesus. He had heard everything that Jesus had had to say. He had been with Jesus. He had asked so many wonderful and insightful questions. He was a man of deep faith. And he was one of them, and he knew the story. And so all they had to do was tell him the rest of it. And they blew it. They blew it. He didn't believe them. We give a lot of crap to Thomas. I'm sorry. But we do. We call him Doubting Thomas. And we have all these pictures of him, you know, sticking his hand into Jesus and going, oh gosh, I guess he must really be alive again. But we don't think about the fact that these other apostles had a whole week to tell him about what it meant that Jesus was alive again, to share their experience of, of seeing Jesus present with them and, and how he said, peace be with you, and how he, he breathed on them breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, just as my Father sent me, I am sending you. Right? They, they, they had a whole week to tell this story. And Thomas said, no. No way. I'm, I'm not going to, I'll believe this when I can put my fingers in the holes in his hands. When I can put my hand in his side, then, yeah, then I'll believe. They, they, they missed it. They couldn't do it. Their words couldn't possibly do justice to the experience of Jesus that they had had. And so the next week when they're upstairs in that locked room, huddled away, Jesus again appears among them. And you can just hear the smile in his eyes as he turns to Thomas and says, here I am. Look, put your, put your hands here. Put your hands here. I'm right here. I'm with you. Don't, don't doubt anymore, but, but believe. And you can hear the tears coming down Thomas's face as he doesn't go poking in Jesus's body, but simply falls to his knees and makes the single simplest and most powerful confession of who Jesus is. He simply says, my Lord and my God. He's the first one to say that. He's the first one in Scripture to call Jesus God. That's tremendous. That's what makes us Christians, right? Not just followers of some uh, philosopher who, who taught and healed and, and, and maybe had this miraculous resurrection thing going on, but that, but that Jesus, in fact, is God. That all of these stories are, are so much more palatable and so much more true because it is not just some guy, some particularly holy man, but, but God, God Almighty in the flesh, present with us. And it's Thomas who articulates that only because Thomas got what all of the other disciples got, what all of the other apostles got, what the women at the tomb and Peter and the rest all got. They, he got an experience of the risen Christ. That's what he needed. That's what his faith needed because the truth is resurrection is too big. Easter is too big for us to surround and, and understand with words. We can't tell the story of the resurrection. We can't tell it in a way that will convince anybody. The only way, the only way that this story can take root in someone's life is if Jesus show, shows up. That's the only way this story can be passed along. That's what this is about, right? Yes, Jesus says, you know, did you believe because you've seen me? Blessed are they who have not seen and yet have come to believe. And, and yes, he's speaking in a, in a really literal way that, that we have not seen Jesus in the flesh the way that, that Mary Magdalene and, and the way that Thomas and, and Peter and all the rest of the apostles uh, saw him. But we have seen Jesus. We have come to know the risen Christ, or we wouldn't be here. I don't mean here in this place on this particular Sunday morning. I mean here as a church. There's no way that this, this, this whole crazy idea of a church could have sustained for this long unless Jesus showed up. Because there's no way, no matter how eloquent you are, no matter how well you can string words together or paint a picture, there's no way something this big could make sense unless Jesus shows up. I mean, think about it. God has this plan to redeem and renew the world, to overturn the orders of death and oppression that seem to govern us, and, and to create a new world where each and every one of us knows without a doubt, deep in the bottom of our bones, that we are God's beloved, and, and builds a world based on that. 
God wants to do all of this, and God chooses us? These people? Fishermen and, 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 and tax collectors and prostitutes and, and all sorts of other dregs of society, and even, even us with all of our brokenness and all of our problems and all of our doubt, God chooses us. That doesn't make any sense. It only makes sense if Jesus has shown up again and again and again. That's how this story is passed along. Because we've met Jesus. We've encountered the risen Christ in our lives, in our stories, in the love of a friend in the way that someone has, has held our hand through the hardest times, in the ways that a, a word, a gesture, an act of love has helped us not to overcome the problems that we face, but to survive them, to walk through them. We have known the risen Christ when we have walked through death itself and come out on the other side. That's how we've known Jesus. And that's the story we're called to tell. And yet we're not called to tell it because we're going to convince anybody. That, that, that doesn't work. We can't use the right words. We can't, we can't do the right things. All that we do and try to do with our, with our rituals and our symbols and our liturgy, it's not enough because Jesus has to show up. But here's what we do. We tell our story. We learn our story. We know our own stories, not as, as some kind of a drama or comedy or farce where we are the, the main character, but rather a story where God is acting in our lives. And we learn to tell that story. We learn to tell it not because it's going to convince anybody else that way. We learn to tell it because it is going to transform us. When we can look at our lives through the lens of an encounter with the risen Christ, however we have met him, then we're going to be transformed because we are going to start to see the world in a different way. We're going to start to see the ways in which God brings life out of death and light out of darkness and, and truth out of error and, and righteousness out of sin and all of those words that we try to use, try to pile together to make some sense of what this amazing thing is. But we try to become people who live that story. And we do that we do this not only so that we can know the story ourselves, so that when others come and meet us and see our community, see our lives and our lives together, we become a place where people, where others can meet the risen Christ. We can't convince anybody of something as miraculous, as huge as the resurrection. All we can do is tell our story and set the table and invite them in. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and join with the voices of the church in every time and place as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, beginning on page four of your worship booklet. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. from the dead saying, Hallelujah, Lord, hear our prayer. For hearts filled with gratitude for your blessings, especially those in whose honor the flowers in the sanctuary have been given, we pray to you, O Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, hear our prayer. For Michael, our presiding bishop, <clears throat> Thomas, our own bishop, and for Andrew, Chris, and Gail, our clergy, and for all members of your holy church, that we may be a sign of Christ's light for all who have lived in darkness, of hope for all who know pain and suffering, and of love for all who have been rejected. We pray to you, O Lord. Amen. For this parish family gathered together with the risen Lord, that we may be strong in faith, confident in hope, and abounding with love for God and neighbor, we pray to you, O Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in authority in the nations of the earth, especially Joseph, our president, and Janet, our governor, that they may pursue justice and peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live in places of war, violence, and unrest, especially in Ukraine, that with all God's people, they may live in freedom, safety, and peace. We pray to you, O Lord. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they may know the risen Lord who brings hope and healing. We pray especially for, for Jim Andrews, Sue Andrews, Mary Arcidia Kono, Jackie Belmonte, Jamie Carpenter, Patty Gagney, Roland Gagney, Louise McCormick, Suzanne Robinson, Maureen Summers, Michelle Mondor, Delta Fuller, Elaine McClellan, Barbara Hill, Dorothy Math Matheson, Davis Robinson, Sue Cryer, Sue Courier, Carolyn Kershaw, Norm Anderson, Bob Gunter, Nancy Tuttle, Sheila Kayser, and Donna Bacon. We pray to you, O Lord. For those who have died, especially Tom Cryer, who died this past week, and Heather Ann McClellan, and Frank Arcidiacono, in whose memory the vigil candle is lit, that they may live forever with Christ in the glory of the resurrection. We pray to you, O Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, hear our prayer. Lifting our voices with the blessed Virgin Mary, blessed David, our patron, 
and all the saints who have borne witness to the risen Christ. Let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, friends, the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. To share with one another some sign of God's peace. God's peace to all those of you watching online. God's peace. God's peace. God's, God's peace. peace. God's peace. Will you please be seated for a few announcements? Well, once again, welcome to St. David's Episcopal Church on this beautiful second Sunday in Easter. As always, it is a joy and a privilege to be here with you. Um, if you are joining us for the first time today or you're returning after a time away, welcome and welcome back. We are blessed by your presence with us. And if you're joining us for the first time or once again online, we are so grateful that you are checking in with us uh, in that way as well. Uh, for those of you who are here, if you'd like to get to know a bit more about us and have us get to know you a bit better, I invite you to fill out one of the newcomer cards in the, in the um, uh, table in the entryway and either place that in the offering plate or hand it to myself or an usher, um, and we can reach out to you and be in touch. Um, so welcome. Uh, there are a number of announcements in your bulletin about um, what is coming up and what's going on here at St. David's. I did want to highlight uh, a big thanks to all those whose names are listed in helping out for our spring cleanup day um, last Saturday. As you can tell, our grounds are looking spick and span and our kitchen is, is gleaming, so it's a wonderful thing. Thank you to all those who made it happen, as well as to uh, our buildings and grounds crew for organizing that. Such a wonderful thing. Um, the book sale is coming, and the book sale is back, which is wonderful. It's our first one since 2019. So we are so grateful to do that. Um, it is time to start going through your bookshelves, maybe those, uh, those cheap novels you were reading during the, the height of the pandemic. You're ready to trade out for some more cheap novels. Um, so do go start going through and gathering those up. There's information about how that's, uh, how that's working, um, and you'll be hearing more from um, our organizers of that event. But just uh, your, your hint now to start going through those, uh, those bookshelves and things like that. Um, also, for those of you who are in, on, on our email distribution list, uh, and of course we, we prayed for him in the prayers of the people, you know that uh, Tom Cryer passed away uh, earlier this week. Uh, Tom and his wife Sue have been longtime members of St. David's. They usually attended the 8 o'clock service. Um, but uh, his uh, memorial service will be this afternoon at 1 o'clock. So you are all more than welcome to join us uh, here for that service. Um, as a way of remembering and celebrating his life. And uh, the service will be live streamed as well. So for those of you who would like to support Sue and the Cryer family from afar, you are more than welcome to join us in that way. But I did want to let you all know as he has been um, a long time and very active member of this congregation. Are there any other announcements? In that case, the last and most important thing I can think of to remind you is that each and every one of you who seeks a closer relationship with Christ is welcome to receive communion at this table. When the time comes, I invite you to kind of make your way to the end of your uh, row and come down the central aisle, and I'll be standing in front of the altar to distribute communion. Um, you can hold out both hands to receive the bread. If you need a gluten-free wafer, hold out one hand instead of two, and I'll know to give that to you. Um, and Deacon Chris will be standing next to me with the chalice. Uh, we're not yet receiving from the common cup, but she will be there as a reminder that we are still uh, receiving the fullness of communion. So while we won't be intincting or sipping or anything like that, uh, she will say the familiar words of the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, to which you might respond, amen. Um, and if you are not disposed to receive communion here today, for whatever reason, uh, this is still your place and your time, and you are welcome here. So if that's the case, I invite you to come forward with everyone else, cross your arms over your chest, and I'll know to give you a blessing rather than communion. And now let us walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice unto God.
Bless, O Lord, these offerings for the work of your holy church. Amen. We continue with the Eucharistic prayer, which is found in your worship booklet. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve you, all your cre creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, glorified by you, his heavenly Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, 
with patriarchs and matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with David and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
The prayer after communion is found in the last page of your worship booklet. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. One more announcement I forgot, which is that you're all welcome to join us for coffee hour following the service right in the Great Hall. And now, friends, remember that life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father who created you, the Son who redeems you, and the Holy Spirit who makes you holy be among you today and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 209 in the blue hymnal, number 209. When Jesus shows up, we have a story to tell. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.